Bill 19. All right, well, we're going to get started. I'm going to call to order the June 5th, 2017 North Clackamas Park and Recreation District Budget Committee meeting. And I'd entertain a motion to elect the chair. I make a motion uh, to elect uh, Macy Gast. I'll second that motion. It's been moved and seconded to elect Macy Gast, right? That's good. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Got the gavel back. Nice. Yes. Excellent. All right. Uh, first act, I'd like to uh, uh, put out for nomination for secretary. Do we have any nomina nominations? Uh, I'll nominate Eric Sean. Do we have a second? I'll second the nomination. It's been moved and seconded that Eric Sean be elected secretary. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. <coughs> all right. The ayes have it. The motion is approved. Okay. I uh, would like to go ahead and move uh, and ask for the presentation of the budget message. First thing I got to make sure do you have budget at a bocce ball court? <laughs> mm. Right out of the gate's a tough question. There we go. I have heard of that interest. <laughs> okay. Good morning, uh, budget committee members, uh, board members, and uh, Administrator Krupp and fellow staff. I'm Scott Archer. I'm the director of the North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District. And I am uh, pleased to present the North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District budget for fiscal year 2017-18. It is balanced. It is in compliance with Oregon budget law, and uh, it is responsible. Um, I would like to also acknowledge uh, um, that uh, Laura Zentner, our, our NCPRD business operations director, is here and will uh, potentially help uh, answer any questions or clarify information. Uh, Gary Barth, who just you just heard from, uh, some of you just heard from on a different presentation, the Business Community Services Director, of which NCPRD is part of that larger department. And then I'd also like to acknowledge that a number of our uh, senior and leadership staff from the district are present and uh, would uh, like to thank them and, and acknowledge their hard work uh, in assembling this uh, this budget, it's a big process. And then and then also last and certainly not least, we have uh, several members of our department's finance team with, with Ms. Sentner uh, who are critical in helping us put this together. So it is a big team effort. Um, I will be providing you a brief overview and summary of the proposed budget, which of course is detailed in your budget books. Um, I would ask respectfully uh, if the committee would be so inclined to allow me to get through the overview um, completely and hold any questions that you might have until the end um, as it kind of tends to happen. Sometimes your questions might be answered in a latter part of the presentation, but uh, if that's possible, it would be, would be most appreciated. <clears throat> uh, North Clackamas Park and Rec District, um, our, uh, we, uh, pardon me, Got ahead of myself on some of my notes here. Um, our mission statement is to enrich community vitality and promote healthy living through parks and recreation. Uh, and our vision is to enhance and connect uh, your community by providing exceptional parks and rec services for all. And uh, we, we try to live up to those uh, every day. So our, diving a little bit more into our budget, but uh, just a little bit more background for you before we do that. Uh, NCPRD is, as you know, is a service district of the county. Uh, we have our own uh, operating funding, uh, our own separate tax base. Uh, we receive no county general fund support. Um, we are separate from Clackamas County Parks. We sometimes get confused with one another. County Parks is, is more of our rural parks uh, and also includes Stone Creek Golf Course. So we are not them and they are not us. We're in the same broad department of BCS, but not, not one in the same. Uh, NCPRD serves about 122,000 residents in the northern urban part of the county. 
Uh, we encompass the cities of Milwaukee and Happy Valley and their urban growth management areas or UGMAs. Uh, and we also serve large, un uh, large unincorporated areas, uh, including Oak Grove, Jennings Lodge areas, uh, unincorporated east side of 205, and more. Uh, I'd like to address something before we delve into the budget that I know everybody is uh, probably thinking of uh, with regards to this budget, and that is our situation with Happy Valley. Uh, and I just want to kind of touch on that here briefly. Um, as, as you all know, I believe um, Happy Valley has indicated that they're uh, likely to withdraw from North Clackamas Park and Recreation District. And I want to let you know that this proposed budget reflects no changes in regard to this pending decision. Um, we, have no, we, do, we do not anticipate any changes budgetarily until the following budget year, the 2018-19 uh, budget cycle, at which time uh, we will certainly address any changes to that. Now, that doesn't mean we're not thinking about the situation budgetarily and being thoughtful as we move through the process, but just to let you know that this budget does not reflect any changes per that situation. Um, the tax rate is essentially locked in for the year. We'll collect our revenues as we would, and we'll make adjustments as needed. And then if, as we need to, we will right-size our budget. <clears throat> our budget overview. Um, we are, <clears throat> our budget, as I noted, is, is balanced. Uh, it's prudent and it's responsible. Um, our total proposed budget is $55,091,141. And this, um, this can be uh, summarized roughly as follows. About $11.9 uh, million for operations, uh, $9.8 million for capital projects, $9.8 million in system development charges to fund capital assets to accommodate growth, $4.5 million for capital asset repair and replacement for existing district assets, uh, $9.9 .9 million for debt service and $9.2 million in interfund transfers. Um, the $55 million, uh, if you uh, were to exclude the transfers because that is not additional money, but it has to be accounted for, uh, it would, our budget would equate to about $46 million. Uh, in our budget, we have nine funds and 11 divisions. Um, again, we have a a dedicated permanent tax rate uh, of just under 54 cents per thousand. Uh, that is anticipated to generate about $7 million in this budget. Um, if you add in the fees and charges on top of that, that makes up the majority of our uh, general fund. Uh, and I, I want to make a, a distinction that between the general fund and what we'll talk about more later with our capital um, projects, our CIP. Um, the general fund is, is mainly how we uh, go about operating our core services, facilities, programs, uh, and, and the like. Uh, we operate and manage 75 parks, trails, and natural areas, plus our major facilities, uh, the Aquatic Park, uh, Milwaukee Center, Hoodview Park, North Clackamas Park, and then of course we have a wide variety of services and activities and programs. And again, the general fund is mainly how we operate those. Uh, it, is, it is on in, in small amounts used for some of our capital projects, but mainly it is support our operations. Now, uh, again, we are, uh, as, a, as a separate uh, county service tax district with our own rate, uh, we're very appreciative that we've got the about 54 cents per thousand to operate. Um, we do, I think, um, considering that rate, we do remarkably well with the amount of programs and services that we are able to provide. Um, however, in, in comparison, um, when you look at uh, other districts in the state of Oregon that would be comparable in size or, or how they operate, such as Tualatin Hills Parks and Rec, um, Willamette Lane down in the Springfield area, and Bend Parks and Recreation, uh, we're somewhere between... Um, a fourth and a third of the tax rate of those same uh, or comparable districts. So we do uh, a lot with, with not as much as, as what you might see with our peers. Uh, and that's both a testament to uh, our staff and the great job that they do, uh, but it also can at times be uh, a, a burden in terms of we can't 
we can't quite provide all of what our community would like us to do at times. So uh, we have to just deal with, uh, with within our existing uh, funding availability. Uh, and in terms of our, <clears throat> our capital, uh, the SDCs make up most of the capital, and uh, we're going to get more into that a little bit more into this uh, presentation, but I would want to note that the SDCs cannot be used for any type of maintenance support, uh, just for uh, acquisition and uh, development. Financial trends, uh, revenues are relatively flat with modest gains. Expenditures. Um, some of the issues there we're dealing with, um, we have some increasing uh, expenditure rates that are projected currently above, uh, not in this budget, but over time above our revenues. Those will be adjusted and right-sized as, as time goes on. And then one of our bigger issues, and, and of course that um, our entire county and lots of public agencies are dealing with is our, is our significant PERS increases, and, and uh, we are uh, dealing with those. Um, regards to our FTEs, our personnel, I would note that we do have an increase from uh, this current budget year to the 27-18. Um, we are adding two uh, equivalent full-time staff persons, and you see that we are adding the equivalent of three seasonal and part-time staff. The, the seasonal and part-time are mostly related to programmatic things that those kind of fluctuate up and down as we do programs or if we do not do programs. Um, more significantly, the, the two new full-time uh, staff that we are adding, that we're proposing to add in this budget are, one is a natural areas uh, maintenance uh, person uh, that would be um, to support our existing program. We currently do that with a lot of seasonal and part-time staffing, and we are proposing to uh, combine a lot of that staffing and make it into a full-time position so that we don't have to keep turning over seasonal folks, that we can have a consistent full-time person. The other position that we're adding is an events coordinator uh, to increase our community uh, programs and events, and I'll talk about that a little bit more later. This is going to be just a snapshot of our, uh, we have nine funds and 11 divisions within our budget, and I'm going to walk you through those. <clears throat> uh, the first of our major funds is our general fund, and this houses nine of our 11 uh, budget divisions, and those are listed there. Um, and also uh, the nutrition and transportation fund, this is separate from the general fund for accounting purposes. <clears throat> uh, we, have three, uh, we have three SDC, again, system development charges, I refer to those as SDCs, as you all know. Uh, three SDC funds, each of those represents a zone. Zone one is the city of Milwaukee plus its UGMA. Zone two is unincorporated uh, west of 205, uh, uh, excluding the city of Milwaukee's UGMA. Uh, and zone three is the city of Happy Valley and its UGMA, uh, and also the unincorporated areas east of 205. <clears throat> Other funds we have, um, we have two debt service funds, uh, 2010 and 2008. Uh, we have a capital asset replacement uh, fund. Uh, and then the next several slides, those are, those, that, li uh, that lists all of our funds. The next several slides, uh, we're going to cover each of the, the funds with their specific programs. I'm going to walk through these quickly. I know that uh, we're, we're going to cover a lot of information in a, in a brief amount of time, so we'll be happy to answer questions. Um, at the end. So the general fund uh, is budgeted at approximately $13 million. Uh, the revenue mostly is our property taxes plus our fees and charges. Uh, we have a contingency of about $2 million. Um, this is, uh, has been done through prudent budget management and this is for uh, unforeseen needs and emergencies. Um, the nine divisions under the general fund um, touch on each of those quickly, our administrative division, total of about $4.6 million. Uh, the, the administrative division uh, coordinates all aspects of business and operations for the district, including management, uh, finance, budget, uh, and, uh, and many other functions. Um, significant projects and issues that we're dealing with there. I think most of you are very aware of our strategic partnership uh, with the North Clackamas School District, which we are very excited about, uh, which will 
swap uh, will will be essentially selling Hoodview in exchange for about sixteen million dollars uh, in funding from the school district, as well as we'll be receiving Concord Elementary School and likely one other school site, um, which we are still working out the details on. We haven't we've executed the agreement, but we have not yet closed on the deal. We're still in the due diligence period for that. Uh, the other big issue, of course, is that we are addressing and working through the uh, City of Happy Valley's anticipated withdrawal, and no doubt, administratively, we'll be spending a lot of our time and effort on that. Um, I'd also like to note, um, this applies from kind of an administrative perspective, but will apply to a number of our, of our programs, that we are taking um, an approach of, of really refocusing our efforts to provide programs and services with our residents, uh, the district residents in mind first, and then our uh, out of district or our visitors secondarily. Not that, not that we don't welcome and, and uh, certainly encourage um, non-residents to participate, but we, we've really um, at times um, spent a lot of effort trying to get folks from out of the district to participate in whether it be programs or at the aquatic park or the like. And we really wanna make sure uh, we're going to make a, a diligent effort that we're focusing on our district residents first and foremost and their, their needs. <laughs> our maintenance division is responsible for maintaining all of our district parks and facilities. Um, this, this group continues to provide excellent service with um, really uh, at times modest staffing levels, but they do a great job. Um, our money for maintenance uh, needs tends to follow our physical assets. So whatever um, we have as physical assets, those are the things that need to be maintained and we, we, we budget and program according to that. Uh, we're continually planning and adjusting for our needs as those may change as, for example, bringing on new facilities. Recreation division, uh, this provides a variety of recreational activities and services. Uh, some highlights there, we've um, this past year provided uh, we served about 1,000 youth uh, through our rec mobile and our summer nutrition program uh, at, at a variety of sites throughout the district. Uh, we had nearly 2,500 people attend our movies in the park, uh, and we are looking to uh, continue to um, focus and grow those types of things. And again, I, I mentioned that we're adding a new uh, special events coordinator. Uh, we'd really like to uh, expand upon those types of community events and special events that, that draw together and create community and, and bring together uh, people and, and also, um, frankly, put a great face on the district and, and bring us a lot of brand value. So uh, we'll be, um, that's in our proposed budget to do uh, some increased special events programming. Uh, also noted here is uh, we've budgeted for the purchase of two vans to be our rec mobiles. We have one existing rec mobile that is no longer uh, functioning. It has, uh, it has uh, run its last mile, uh, served us very well for a number of years. Um, so we are <clears throat> going to, uh, our, our proposal here is to provide two smaller uh, rec mobiles than this bigger uh, vehicle that we have right now that's just one, so that we can split up and have a couple of teams going out and, and have better service and uh, those will be uh, branded with our logo and our district information. They'll be very visible to the public and also we'll, not just for RecMobile, but we'll be able to use those at other programs and, and activities and, and special events. <clears throat> sports division, uh, we have a robust youth and adult sports program. Uh, this last year we had about 2,700 youth and 2,500 adults participate in our, in our various sports programs. Uh, we are continuing to um, one of, our, one of our main uh, objectives there is to continue to further emphasize and imp implement our cost recovery plan. That's our cost recovery pyramid um, and make sure that we are uh, charging program fees accordingly for per our um, approved uh, cost recovery plan. Milwaukee Center, uh, we provide a wide array of social, recreational, educational, uh, and, and other services focused focus mostly on older adults and, um, and also disabled uh, community members. And then secondarily, uh, we also are promoting and continuing to work on um, 
utilizing the center as an all ages community center. So we use it for other programs and activities. Not, it's not just a senior center. Uh, in this current fiscal year, we provided <clears throat> through the Milwaukee Center, uh, we've provided about 83,000 meals, 10,000 rides, um, assistance and referral information to about 3,000 uh, individual, um, individual clients. Uh, 40,000 40, hours of volunteer time to assist us in, in operating our programs and services. Um, and then we uh, continue to do strategic repair and, and upkeep on, on the facility. It's, it's an aging facility and we want to make sure that we're taking care of that. And we've addressed that in some of our capital asset repair and replacement uh, uh, dollars. The North Clackamas Aquatic Park, um, this is the, the aquatic park is the biggest swim program in the state of Oregon. Uh, we, we hosted about, about a quarter of a million total visits this last year. Um, we had about uh, just under 5,000 swim lessons. That's uh, one of the things I think that we, and I know certainly I am as the director, most proud of uh, that we do is we, we teach young people how to swim. Um, that is not just an, uh, an educational recreational opportunity, but it is a, it's a life-saving opportunity, and we really value that, and we, we have a huge uh, swim lessons program. Uh, we also host several swim teams. Uh, we have fitness programs and, and other uh, types of programs. Um, <clears throat> again, uh, we have uh, one of the things that we're doing uh, as, a, uh, as an initiative is continuing to uh, emphasize our cost recovery pyramid uh, implementation and we'll be looking at in this coming fiscal year some uh, adjustments to our fees based on what that uh, cost recovery plan guides us to do. Um, one of the things I do want to note is that um, our cost recovery rate, so know that in uh, public aquatic facilities um, a a popular topic of discussion is always, um, you know, are you going to break even or are you going to make a certain amount of money? And what I'd like to address is that um, our cost recovery rate, uh, our actuals after we've uh, completed a budget cycle, tend to run in the 55 to 60 percent rate. So we're recovering about 55 to 60 percent of the amount that it costs us to operate in fees and, and, and the like. And I want to tell you that um, I've been in uh, the parks and recreation field for about 25 years. I've operated probably in the neighborhood of about a half a dozen uh, public aquatic facilities. And I can tell you that, um, that our aquatic park is very much in line with industry standards. In fact, um, we actually trend towards the higher end of the cost recovery. You'll see the, the standard is kind of runs about 30 to 60%. So we're kind of pushing towards the higher end of that. And um, it is a conscious budgetary decision that we make to uh, support the, the, the difference with our general fund dollars um, because we believe that the value of having a public aquatic facility is, uh, is worth doing so. If we, if we don't support that, then uh, we wouldn't have the aquatic facility. I know in the private industry there are uh, some examples of, of break-even pools, but those tend to be more focused on pools that are a an element of maybe a health club. So it's just a secondary use kind of a thing or your big entertainment, uh, gigantic you know, outdoor water parks, your Disney parks, whatever. Those, those tend to be profit centers, but those are not uh, providing the types of services typically that we are. <clears throat> Our marketing communications division uh, is, uh, we publicize and promote uh, the district's array of programs and services. Uh, this division um, helps us to connect directly with our district residents. Uh, it highlights the presence and value of NCPRD to our community. Um, and uh, we, are, we have been uh, working towards our major uh, initiative that we've just begun to roll out and will really start to imp uh, implement in 2017-18, and that is our, um, our district outreach and awareness campaign. You'll see a significant... Um, amount of, of uh, outreach and uh, visibility uh, through our marketing program in our community. This is also the, the division that, that does our discovery guide, which is our, which is our program that comes out, uh, our magazine style program. We do lots of uh, program flyers, we do social media and, uh, 
and a variety of other ways of outreach. So it, it is a busy department. <clears throat> the planning division, uh, we, with this division, we coordinate uh, and manage uh, all of the acquisition of land, parks and facilities, planning, uh, development of parks, trails, and facilities. So this is the division that's responsible to essentially manage all of that planning. Uh, the, the major initiatives to be completed uh, in the next budget cycle um, include, um, we are anticipating executing the, uh, the Hidden Falls project. Um, and we look to complete our master plan, which has been in draft form for a while. Uh, and, and tied closely to that, we are also in the process and we anticipate completion of uh, the update of our system development charges plan. Hasn't been updated since 2007, which also then um, correlates with our updating of our capital improvements plan. So those are going to be completed in the budget cycle coming up. Uh, additionally, this division will be responsible for uh, developing Wichita Neighborhood Park, which is a neighborhood park on the eastern side of Milwaukee. Um, we will also be doing um, community planning for the use around um, the, the Concord School site, as well as the, uh, the outdoor portion of that, which we're very excited about. <clears throat> And I didn't hit you with that slide. I apologize. I just realized that. So that's what I was just talking about. Natural Resources Division. Uh, this is division that is responsible for managing all of our district's natural resources. So within our parks, uh, trails, uh, and natural areas, we have a special uh, program of uh, folks that have uh, additional training, additional expertise in specific um, items related to maintaining our district's natural resources, uh, which is a part of our system that is, that is very important and, and <coughs> is valued by our community. Uh, the major initiatives there, um, we continue to partner with, uh, with our own, our county's own water environmental services, West Department, on uh, numerous properties. We work closely with them. We partner with a number of other agencies. Uh, one of the bigger ones that we're doing uh, this next year is we're partnering with the Oak Lodge Water Services District on the Boardman Wetlands Project. Uh, we will be uh, uh, initiating our North Clackamas River Trail Project, uh, and we will also be looking to um, tie into the completion of the Cronberg Park uh, uh, natural areas. The city of Milwaukee received a large um, transportation grant that uh, will complete the, uh, the major pathway through the park, connecting essentially downtown, the new, the new TriMet Bridge uh, to 99E. Uh, so the city got a transportation grant and we are looking to supplement that to complete as much of the remainder of the uh, master plan of Cronenberg Park as we can. <clears throat> Our nutrition and transportation fund, again, this is, this is essentially um, the programs are housed within the Milwaukee Center, but is a it's a it's it's a separate fund, um, and uh, it's a separate fund because they're basically for accounting purposes. Uh, it does receive some uh, general fund support, uh, and the total fund there is uh, just about eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars. <throat> so, two divisions within that: the nutrition. Division uh, manages all of our nutrition services for older adults and people with disabilities. Um, we do a significant uh, amount of fundraising to support this program. Uh, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we provide nearly 85,000 meals to uh, some of our district's most vulnerable residents. And, and again, that's one of the, that is one of the meals program, both the Meals on Wheels, where we actually go out to folks that are homebound as well as our congregate meals on site um, is one of, I think, our uh, more uh, important and, and one of those programs that I'm more proud of or most proud of that we do. I think it's just uh, a very important thing that, that our district provides. The transportation division, uh, <clears throat> it's uh, not a very large budget there, just about $170,000. Uh, this provides transportation to older adults uh, and disabled persons. Uh, we've provided uh, we provided about 10,000 rides a year, uh, and uh, I would note that this 
program is mainly funded through grants, um, fees and charges, and fundraising. So our NCPRD uh, SDC funds. <clears throat> so system development charges, uh, as I think you all know, are uh, assess they're charges that are assessed and collected as one-time development fees uh, to offset growth-related impacts to our park system. So in other words, if you're developing something new, you're buying into the system. Uh, the SDCs fund the majority of our parks uh, development program, our, our capital development. Um, we have um, not a significant amount of SDCs collected in our, in our low growth and built out areas. Most of the SDCs uh, come from, of course, our high, air, our high growth areas, which tend to be on the east side of 205. So there's always uh, that discussion around, um, you know, the, the uh, Milwaukee area, the, the west side unincorporated, not having as much of, of these funds available to utilize uh, as the east side does. And um, we have to be re more reliant on other funding sources to do projects in those areas where we don't c collect as much SDCs. So our total SDC uh, fund budget is about $17 million. Uh, and that includes transfers and uh, projected balances. Again, uh, zones one and two, which is Milwaukee and uh, the West Side Unincorporated, <clears throat> uh, have modest uh, collections projected. Um, zone one, 76,000. Zone two, about 240,000. And then uh, zone three, again, that is our high growth area. So that's where you see the majority of our SDCs collected, um, about $2.7 million. Uh, again, uh, as I noted a little bit earlier, um, we are in the process of updating our SDC ordinance, so it is likely that the uh, the rates that we collect will um, will change at some point. We anticipate adopting a new SDC rate uh, sometime in the coming year. Uh, our debt service fund budgets. <clears throat> we have two debt service funds. Uh, one is the 2010 uh, a debt service fund that is essentially the remaining aquatic park debt um, that was carried forward uh, from the original debt on the aquatic park and some of the original projects. It's a revenue, uh, it's a revenue bond, not a not a geo bond. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a in a few minutes, but um, we have carried that for re refinanced that and uh, carried that forward, uh, and then our 2008. Uh, debt service fund is the Hoodview uh, project, and uh, when we sell that to the school district and receive the funds, we will defease that um, through that transaction. So in other words, we're going to pay that debt off once we close that transaction. Uh, our capital projects fund budget, again, this is um, <clears throat> mainly funded from our SDCs, and I want to note, again, this is separated mostly, uh, not, not entirely, but mostly from our 54 cent permanent rate. Um, and we, we use just a little bit of our, of our general fund for supplementing some of our projects, but, but really for the most part, it's, it's separated from our, from our permanent rate. So our capital uh, projects fund, uh, again, mostly SDCs, supplemented by some grants, and um, as I said, minimally supported by our general fund. Uh, again, NCPRD um, has done uh, credit to the, the staff bef before me and a lot of the current staff here have done a remarkable job with um, projects considering that uh, our district has not ever um, passed a general obligation bond of any type in the history of the district since, since formation in 1990. Uh, we have never um, gone out for and never uh, had the luxury of a general obligation bond, which would support both capital projects as well as um, helping with deferred maintenance or uh, asset uh, management. <clears throat> this is a list of our, um, our capital projects. Uh, just quickly there, I'll just kind of touch on those, the, uh, the things that we're planning to do in this fund in the coming year. The, the master plan update, which includes our capital improvement plan. I know that's a, those are uh, small and probably hard to see. Uh, the Boardman Wetlands area, uh, community park with artificial turf in Happy Valley, uh, Happy Valley Neighborhood Parks, uh, Hidden Falls, I've mentioned that, uh, and Indoor Recreation Facilities Master Plan, which would um, uh, 
uh, include uh, some significant work on the um, development or the, the planning for what Concord Elementary School uh, will eventually be used for. Uh, Justice Park, a uh, small neighborhood park in, on the east side. Uh, North Clackamas Park, uh, we've been looking at acquiring uh, some adjacent property there for the north side phase two plan. Uh, the North Clackamas River Trail, which is about a four and a half mile public greenway along the north side of the river. We, are, we have a master plan completed and we are ready to move into some land acquisition on that project. That's um, a very exciting initiative. Cronenberg Park, I mentioned that. Um, our SDC methodology update, <clears throat> Wichita Park, uh, and then some Zone 2 neighborhood acquisition. Okay. okay. I am nearly done, and Gary's just reminded me that we're, we're pushing up against our time, and I'm, I'm just about to the last couple slides here. I just want to mention on this before we, we move on quickly that the, uh, <clears throat> the projects uh, that are noted here, as you see, there are several projects that are, that are in Happy Valley. And, and again, uh, with some of the prior comments that I've made, but um, would note that um, we're, we've left these in uh, knowing that it's likely that Happy Valley is gonna withdraw. And of course, when that happens, we will, we will take these projects and these funds that are not already executed and we will set them aside. The one that I would like to note that is very close to being executed is, is the Hidden Falls project. And we'd like, to, we'd like to take that one across the finish line and have a, an, an executed deal. The other thing I'd like to note that's important with the capital is that uh, the proceeds from the strategic partnership uh, are not accounted for in this budget um, as we've, we're still working towards closing on that uh, transaction. Uh, we will be having discussions around the use of those funds and we will be making budget adjustments as necessary. Uh, and then our last fund, and so we are close to wrapping up here before questions, is, uh, is our capital asset replacement fund. This program is to ensure that our assets are repaired and replaced in a systematic manner. Uh, we attempt to do the best that we can to take care of what we have. Uh, so we set aside funds to, um, uh, to put into this and, and then be able to extract out each year and, and do those projects that are most in need of being uh, repaired and replaced. We, uh, again, have not received uh, any support from a general obligation bond to, uh, bond to do these projects. The revenue for this comes mainly from transfers from the general fund into this fund, and then we, again, we uh, extract uh, those out uh, each year for specific projects. Um, quickly, um, I'm not going to I'm not going to go through all of these, but um, just highlights: we've got two projects at the Milwaukee Center. Uh, we've got the replacement of the Casa del Rey Bridge at North Clackamas Park, uh, new maintenance vehicle to support our maintenance program, four projects at the Aquatic Park, our new rec mobiles that I've mentioned, uh, and uh, a couple of other smaller projects there. So, <clears throat> uh, in conclusion, uh, I just want to finalize before I open it up for any questions the, and note that um, NCPRD is, is a viable uh, vibrant district. We are a we are a going concern. We are right now with our population. We are the second largest parks and rec district in the state of Oregon. Uh, if Happy Valley uh, does withdraw, uh, we will be the second largest parks and rec district in the state of Oregon at still over a hundred thousand residents. So we um, we will be focusing on and will continue to provide uh, great services, facilities, and programs for our existing residents. And I'm confident that we'll uh, be able to continue to do so. We'll just, if, if Happy Valley withdraws, we'll just be uh, right-sizing uh, our budget towards those uh, existing residents. So with that, uh, I will be happy to answer any questions you might have. Sure. Uh, I have a couple of comments. First thing that when, um, should Happy Valley remove itself from the district, I, um, I would have to assume that all, the only monies in SDCs that Happy Valley would get are those within their city itself, not within the zone. And I'm pretty sure that's true, so you probably don't have to. That's true, right? Well, um, we believe so. Uh, we'll, be having, uh, we'll be having some discussions around that. There will be, as, as you know, uh, uh, Chair Bernard, there's um, going to be some significant legal discussion that will be occurring for the next several months. And a lot of that is going to be privy to executive session with our uh, NCPRB, uh, NCPRD board of directors. And, and we'll be working through 
uh, that very discussion. The other comment, this is the most bureaucratic uh, budget I've ever seen in such a small district. My goodness. I, I mean, we have other districts that are half the size, I mean, twice the size, and all these different departments. It's, I'd work to uh, lean that out a little bit. Maybe that's the, uh, the performance Clackamas created this, this issue, but it just seems so bureaucratic. My goodness. Um, the, um, I mean, the challenge, the nutrition program is probably one of the most important programs you have. And from what I understand, uh, there may be some consideration from the federal government to cut some of the monies that come. And over the years, the Parks District has had that issue occur a number of times. Uh, and I would just say that, that those nutrition programs are, uh, and Meals on Wheels are probably the most important thing we could do. One of our uh, goals as a county commission is to focus on hunger and poverty, and uh, this district serves a lot of those areas, having been out on Meals on Wheels uh, usually every year once. Uh, it's just such an important program, uh, and uh, I hope that uh, you'll continue to support that program. And if for some reason, uh, you have difficulty doing that. I hope you'll come to the county and make sure that uh, we know uh, that you need some help. The other comment, you, you, you often refer to the general fund supporting. It's, it's the district's general fund supporting because it's a zero and then you'd say the general fund support. Not the county, but yeah, any time that I mention it, that our, that our general fund supports some of the program I was referring to within the NCPRD budget, our district general fund. Good, good clarification. All right, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to just express, um, as I did on Tuesday, that you know, my, our presumption was in respect to staff time and our time that half the time would be for presentation and the other half would be for questions and, and we have scheduled, this was scheduled between 8.45 to be completed by 9.30 and your presentation was 42 minutes long. Okay. Um, so it doesn't leave us much time for a lot of questions in a very difficult year for this district, I might add. So where in the budget is the brass? Because um, as I want to echo Commissioner Bernard's um, point, um, I'm trying to follow and it's so broken up that I can't see financially the brass. So, I mean, I, I see on the very last page the brass is the total accounting for the district, the total budget. And I don't see expenditures broken down. Um, Laura, can you help me with that? We actually don't include the brass document within our document. Brass is the budget system that the county uses. So those are the reports that you see within the county. We, the numbers tie, they're the same numbers. It's just that we did not include the brass. We could print that for you and provide it to you if you would like. It's hard to, it's hard to understand until Commissioner Broner's same point. It's so broken up and so divided that I can't tell. You're, you're at, talking about a, a lot of extra staff um, and I'm not sure where all that plays out. So what is our FTE count total? You're adding, you're gonna add FTE potentially or you added FTE. So I'm looking from a year to year and it's so divided up, I, I can't read it. I mean I, I mean, I can read it, but I can't mathematically tie it all together because there's no brass. The brass reports actually are broken out the same way, so they would still be broken out by the programs that are listed in this document, and the, title, uh, the total would tie out. Again, I can provide that to you if you'd like. Okay, um, but by the time I see that, it'll, we'll be approving the budget, right? In all reality, today, yeah, yeah, that's my that's my concern. Uh, my, the other question is back to the capital expenditures um, and the asset replacement or whatever it's going to be, um, the <laughs> capital account. Um, how is that divided up in a zone equity basis? I know that's been one of the big concerns, and you know I know that's being even a concern by the city of Happy Valley, for example. I know that it's always been a tough thing, and everyone every zone feels as though it's getting not getting their fair share, and that leads to political perceptions and difficulties, and I won't belabor that, but um, it would help to see that broken out. Uh, you know, obviously the SDC funds are broken out, um, but when it comes to spending, I think there's a concern, at least from people I hear, almost regardless what zone you're in, that 
they feel they're not getting their fair share. So is it we have a an understanding, Scott? Do you have an understanding of where? Um, Are you talking about the operating or the STC uh, and the capital? I'm talking. Or, well, you had your your <coughs> capital. <coughs> go back a couple slides. You had your capital element there. The, so you have capital assets. You're talking about the replacement and repair or the capital uh, fund. The, the capital fund. Okay. That one. Yeah. So how is that broken up into um, in, into uh, the zones? Well, we we don't specifically have these uh, broken up by zone in this presentation. What I can tell you is. Um, some of these are, are district-wide efforts, for example, the, the master plan and the CIP update, which will actually refresh our, our uh, specific needs in the different zones and, and the different parts of the district. Um, but they're not broken up, per se, by zone. What I can tell you is um, they're based on a number of things. Again, um, the, the majority of our capital projects are funded by SDCs, and um, a percentage of, of the SDCs are limited to only be spent within the zone they're collected. So that that somewhat limits our ability to spend uh, within different zones, depending on how much is collected. The, um, the other part of that is we, um, we work with, with potential grants and other funding sources that are available to us that might be available and applicable to certain types of projects that are in certain zones. So not, it's not, uh, there's not necessarily the, uh, a specific um, looking at everything is gonna be completely equitable, but over the course of time, I think that the idea is that the district will be looking at fulfilling the needs of, of, um, of the capital needs uh, defining our master plan uh, throughout, throughout the course of time. And some of that's been done and some of it will be done. So we're gonna continue to work towards that. And if I could add to that, if you turn to page 91, there is actually a detail of every capital project that specifies how it is funded, whether it's STCs or a grant or whatever the funding would be. Um, there's a detail of every project. So it's it's fair, I don't know where all those, I don't know where Justice Park is, but it, it looks to me like a substantial amount of those are not in zone two, for example. Yeah. Uh, Again, that virtually most of those projects are not in zone two. Uh, there are there are not a lot in this in this proposed budget, I want to acknowledge again too, um, as I mentioned, the um, the proceeds from the strategic partnership uh, are not accounted for yet, um, and they will be uh, when we have those funds uh, available. And we'll have uh, we'll have discussions with our board, uh, with our community as to uh, helping to meet the needs of the various parts of the district and and where those funds can be used. So. There will be some funds that will be available for discussion for um, for various zones as well. In in addition to what we're already looking at. My last question um, is: uh, Do we have any sense, knowing that the likelihood of Happy Valley following through on their pursuit of exiting the district? Do we have any kind of a pro forma um, going forward, and uh, that has any? Um, long-term feasibility and viability as far as continuing a, at the 39 cents per thousand, uh, 39 point whatever it is. 54 cents. 54 yeah. cents, I'm sorry. Uh, that At that rate, um, that will be able to uh, maintain a, a certain uh, amount of money for operations and maintenance and capital expenditures in such a way. I mean, is it gonna be a benefit financially for the district or a detriment? Uh, for the district for, for the withdrawal of Happy Valley, aside from the extra revenue that comes in, putting that aside, but from just an operation standpoint, um, do we have any sense, is it being a benefit or a detriment? Yeah, again, we're, um, the as noted, the, the current budget uh, does not reflect any of those changes yet. We believe that we'll, uh, we, we know that we'll be looking at some of those changes in the next budget cycle. We are w working on those things and we've, we've begun to work on that. Um, I think the, the important thing to note is a couple things. One is that um, as we reduce that area, yes, we'll lose revenue. Um, I think we're gonna, it's about a million two. 1.3 million it would be the annual property revenue. Property taxes. Uh, but we also know that we're going to be reducing our levels of service that we'll be providing to a, a significant portion of our district. Um, 
and we will look to right size our budget and right size our district. We will still be a district of 102,000 people. We are a large parks and rec district uh, by comparison in the state of Oregon. Uh, and yes, we certainly will be looking at, um, at how that's gonna impact us. Uh, but I believe that we will be a viable uh, district going forward. We're going to continue to look at what um, opportunities there are to, um, if you know, uh, to potentially increase some funding through either uh, an increase in our permanent rate or uh, general obligation uh, bonds and, and the like that might uh, assist with that. But just at our current rate, uh, the district operated for its first. 16 of its 27 years uh, without the city of Happy Valley and was a viable district. And I, I believe that will be a viable district going forward if they do in, in fact withdraw. I guess to follow during your response, my concern is that um, as a person who's been in the district from the beginning uh, in zone two, uh, that we're still waiting, I guess, for some of that. My concern is you're adding FTE and yet at the same time citing that maybe there'll be a, a less service. My concern is that would, if their withdrawal actually happens, do you still plan on hiring those FTE based on your proposed budget? Uh, we may, uh, we may, we want to propose, leave those in the proposed budget and, and have those adopted, but uh, we will evaluate that and it's possible that we might uh, not fill those right away until we are absolutely certain of, of our, our um, financial situation. Yes, good point. And, and uh, Commissioner Savas, just your early point, I, I just want to apologize to you and to the committee for running a bit uh, longer on my presentation. Uh, I will make sure I adjust that in the future. Right. I'm, I'm worried about some of the people in the audience I understand. The following budget I, as well. Yes, thank you. I understand. So a couple things, and one was the staffing. I probably wouldn't hire the staffing. The, the part-time summer help, obviously you'd want to hire those people, but, but as far as a full-time staff, uh, I mean, it's not going to be a m couple of months till this is resolved. You know, like you said, the revenue has already been collected, so it's going to be next year. So I'd be concerned. Also, uh, viable district, uh, you're right, and this time there will be a savings account. Um, well, once the Hoodview Park sells, there will be a savings account, a lot of opportunity. The only other thing is the master plan <laughs> has been held up for four years, if I were to wild guess, uh, which would prob could probably be part of Happy Valley's issue. And it, I know it was held up for, I can't remember why it was, it's been, it's what? Yeah. Because of the, the yeah, November so, 2014 election. Yeah. yeah. And uh, th and that's that's been a problem, and I'd sure like to try to get that master plan completed. But now you got to kind of wait and see what happens in Happy Valley. We were moving along uh, very uh, nicely in our SDC and CIP update uh, process, and actually getting uh, close to taking that project uh, across the finish line, which would also impact our master plan. And then the Happy Valley uh, notification came to us, and we did have to push the pause on that. I can tell you though that. Uh, your point is well taken about completing the master plan, and we fully intend to complete it and adopt it and, and finish that project. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah, are there any other questions? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Please. Um, first, I echo uh, Commissioner Bernard's concern about hiring two more people when the district may be getting smaller. I'm not suggesting that you should not do that. I, I would leave that decision to you, but um, I think you might want to take another look at that. Um, it might be a bit premature. Um, I did have a couple of, uh, oh, another comment. Um, my understanding on the Hoodview project sale, that a number of, or some of that money that comes from that will uh, redirect resources into areas that, of concern, such as what uh, Commissioner Savas had mentioned. So we should see some increased service and, um, and uh, parks facilities in those other areas. Am I correct on that? That's very much a possibility. We're, we're going to be exploring that. We haven't made any of those decisions, but yes, that is open for uh, that type of discussion. Yeah. And then um, I had two financial questions quickly. Uh, one on page 23 of the budget, <clears throat> which is general fund administration. And I noticed in 1617 and in 1718, you had no personnel services. I led to the next page and 
down under personnel administration and county administration, there's a similar, the, the, under personnel administration, no, no, um, no funds, but under county administration, there's some funds. I'm just curious as to why no personal services in administration. Are you covering that in, in a different place? The positions that are uh, located in the administration budget are actually allocated out to the other divisions. Okay. So you, in effect, are covering it in a different location. And then on page 47, personal services, again, general fund marketing and communications. And in fifteen sixteen, you had $96,667. And their proposed budget's 234387 and you have four tenths of a uh, uh, person increase in staffing from 1.98 to 2.12, roughly. So that's a pretty good jump for four tenths of a person. Uh, I was just wondering why. I have to go get my binder. <laughs> Well, I, I don't Or have, I can come back. I can email Just a catch me at a, at a later time. I'd like to know because it just seemed like an awfully big jump. I don't know if that was because of cost allocations of some kind, but I'd be interested in knowing. And then the last thing I had is just a general comment, and that was, as you know, Malala has passed a, um, a, a, a district for their own pool. Would you be prepared, if they were to ask, to provide some consulting services for them uh, maybe on contract basis or something, to because they've had a pool before. Um, I'd hate to see that fail, and they might need the expertise of your department uh, in, on a consulting basis. Is that something you could do if they asked? Uh, potentially. I, I would note that uh, when they were talking about this uh, almost a year ago, uh, Mr. Story from our county council's office and myself went out and met with members of the school board and the city council and actually help them kind of work through what they were uh, looking to do. So we've already, in essence, provided uh, just some uh, some pro bono, um, uh, yeah, professional input, and I'm sure we'd be happy to help uh, with some of that. You know, that might be a contracting basis, and obviously you you have limited resources, and uh, that's not your your um, district, obviously. But um, I just thought it might be useful to their community in the future. <laughs> yeah, we often provide professional uh, help to other other agencies that might want some input. So. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No are there questions? Okay. Um, go to, I'd like to go ahead and open up this uh, hearing to receive public testimony. Please note that anyone wishing to testify should uh, do so by giving their name and address for the record. Doesn't look like it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing. Um, again, to the committee members, are there any questions or other items for discussion? <coughs> okay. Uh, I'm calling for a motion to approve the budget. Do we have a motion? I'd like to make a motion, uh, Chair Gast. I'd like to move that the committee approve the 2017-2018 budget in the amount of $55,091,141 for the North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District as presented, and impose the district's maximum permanent tax <coughs> rate of $0.5382 per $1,000 of assessed value within district boundaries. Do I have a second? I second the motion. It's been moved and seconded that the budget be approved. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. I'm going to abstain. Um, just not clear to me uh, financially, so I'm not in opposition to the budget. Just not clear enough to me to give an eye for it. I believe the eyes still have it, and the motion is approved. Uh, is there any other uh, business before the uh, committee? Okay, this uh, meeting is adjourned.